now that we have identified modules and merge similar modules next we need to relate the modules to traits so we need to find which of the modules have significant association with the trait of interest now recall at the beginning of the analysis one of our biological question was to find genes or clusters of genes that is modules that have significant association with patients having covid-19 so if you look at the call data that is our phenotypic data you will see that we have that information in a column where we can see which of the samples or patients are are covid-19 infected and which are healthy so in order to find modules that have significant association with disease state we need to convert this disease state into a numerical variable or uh, rather binarize this categorical variable and i'll show you how we do that so we can start with call data function and we can create another column that says disease state binary and if um the sample is annotated as covid-19 in the disease state then give it a value of 1 or else give it a value of 0 so all the patients having uh, that are infected with covid-19 will, ha will have a value of 1 in this um, column and the rest of the samples will have a column of uh, a value of 0 in that column so let us take a look at what that looks like so you can see that we have created a new column and all the samples that are covid-19 all the patients that have covid-19 have value 1 and the rest of the samples have value 0 uh, i'm also labeling the convalescent sample as 0 so now let us um get only the columns that are of interest so i'm just going to select one column that is the last column uh, which is column number 7 and let's save this to a variable called traits now in addition uh, to the disease state i also want to associate my modules to severity because the second part of the biological question was um, that what are the genes that are associated with severe covid-19 cases and again if you see that this column is a categorical variable we need to convert these categories into some form of numerical format so that we can associate them with the modules so we can um, actually create each uh, one column for each of these levels so for example we can create a column for convalescent and assign it a value 1 for sample for the convalescent sample and assign value 0 for the rest of the samples similarly we can create another column for moderate where we can assign values 1 for covid-19 moderate cases and the rest of the samples can have value 0 and so on and so forth so the way we do that is by using a function called binarize categorical columns and the first parameter is providing the categorical column and we set the include pairwise comparisons to false and we set include level versus all as true because we want one level to be compared to all others and we set the minimum count to 1 and before we run this i want to set the levels for um the severity column in the call data and just getting the unique values from this column so basically i want to set the values as um the levels as the reference level as healthy followed by convalescent followed by icu moderate and severe and since the levels do follow the same order i just am going ahead and doing this in case if you are processing your data and you don't see um the similar order or um if you want to reset your reference level then you can do that by running um this uh, factor command and setting the levels manually and i'm going to um output this to severity dot out and run this now let's take a look at the severity dot out data frame and here you can see that each level has its own column and the sample that has that value for that level is assigned a value of 1 and the rest of the samples that is the non convalescent sample in the first column are assigned value 0 similarly um, only icu samples have value 1 the rest of the samples have value 0 in the icu column and so on and so forth 
so now we want to combine this data with the trades data uh, so that we have all the trades information in one data frame so let's um, combine them and let's take a look at the trades data so we do see the severity column uh, and it seems that we have chosen the wrong column here so instead of column 7 it should be column 8 and I'm going to rerun it again and now let's rerun this and let's take a look at the trade data again so now that we see instead of the categorical column we have the disease state bin that we created uh, where we all the COVID-19 um, patients were assigned a value 1 and the rest of the samples were assigned value 0 and in addition to that we have the severity uh, columns here as well which we created in the previous step so this is essentially the trade data that we will be using to associate with the modules and find the modules that have significant association with these traits now that we have our traits data ready let us correlate them with the modules now so let us first get the number of samples that is n rows counts let us get number of genes from normalized counts now let us calculate the correlation between module eigengenes and traits using Pearson correlation and let's save this to a variable called module trait correlation now let's um, calculate the p-values for these correlations and let's save this to a variable called module trait correlation p-values let's take a look at the module trait correlation p-values so here are the p-values computed for the correlation between the modules and the traits so this can help us identify which are the modules that are significantly associated with uh, let's say disease state or maybe the severity of the disease we can also visualize the module trait um, correlations um, as a form of a heat map so let us do that so visualize module trait association as a heat map so let us create a data frame called heat map data which will combine data from module eigengenes and traits and we would essentially want to combine them by row names so just to give you a glimpse of what the data looks like so we can do the head on this so basically it combines both the information the module eigengene information as well as the trade data all in one data frame and now we can use this to visualize um, in a form of a heat map so the function that we are going to use is correlation level plot the first parameter is data which is heat map data after which we need to specify what are the columns we need on the x-axis what are the columns we need on the y-axis so for that i'm going to have so i'm just taking a look at all the um, column names so i want my x-axis to have all the trade data so the trade data begins from column 19 to column 21 22 23 column 19 to column 23 so i'm going to provide those um, range to the names so basically it would be a like a vector of the column names and for the y-axis I want all the eigengene names so that's going to be 1 to 18 I'm going to define some colors here now let's run this so the warning tells us that the row names is not numeric so it seems that we have left a column in heatmap.data that is not numeric so let us check again and we can see that the first column here are the row names so we basically need to convert this into row names we cannot have a categorical uh, column here 
so let us do that first before we rerun it again and now let's run this we also need to adjust for the number of columns because that might have shifted so now we need to subtract one from the column ranges now let's run this so taking a look at this heat map um, I'm only going to focus on uh, the modules that are significantly associated with the trait of interest and the level of significance is indicated by the number of asterisks so three asterisks means that the module has high significance to that trait of interest so answering the first part of the question as to which are the genes or the cluster of genes um, that have significant association with COVID-19 individuals. So basically we will be looking at those modules and extracting genes belonging to the modules that have high significance to the disease state. So here we see uh, module black, turquoise, cyan, green and yellow to have high uh, significance um, and they are significantly associated with uh, disease state. Similarly, we can also um, identify modules that are significantly associated with other traits and in this case we could also identify modules that are significantly associated with severity of the disease. So module turquoise seems to have high significance um, and it's significantly associated with severity of the disease. So um, the genes that belong to uh, these um, modules can be extracted and can be further looked into uh, when one is trying to study the underlying mechanisms and pathways that contribute to the severity of the disease. Here I'm not so much focused on the correlation part of it, I'm more focused on the significance of the um, association of the module with the trait of interest and I will explain that in detail in a while. Now let us go back and identify what genes are part of module turquoise. So we can get that simply by creating a data frame. The modules, um, the genes that are associated to the modules are stored in colors slot and we save this as a data frame in a variable called module gene mapping and let's run this so when you take a look at this data frame you will see which gene belongs to what module so you can simply filter this module gene mapping variable to get the genes that belong to that module so module And since these are row names, we just uh, run this and you'll see that this these are the list of genes that belong to module turquoise. So you, using these genes, you can perform further analysis. So before moving on to the last part of the demonstration, I want to talk a little bit more about associating module eigengene, which is a continuous variable with a categorical variable like disease severity. So a lot of us might question at this point whether using Pearson correlation is a statistically sound method to correlate a continuous variable with a categorical variable. But the idea here is not to find the correlation, the operative term here is association. So the idea here is to find uh, modules that have significant association with a categorical trait. Basically finding a relationship between a module eigengene and a trait of interest and to evaluate whether the relationship is statistically significant. The other alternatives to um, correlation method to finding significant association between module eigengenes and categorical traits is by performing um, t-test assuming the variance is equal or using linear models. But it will be interesting for you to know that all these methods yield the similar results. So just to give you a little bit more intuition, here we have performed a student t-test and Pearson correlation between a module eigengene and a trait of interest that is disease severity and we have encoded them as 0 and 1. So 0 being the individuals that do not have severe COVID-19 and 1 being the individuals that have severe COVID-19 uh, disease. 
and essentially what we want to know is whether there is a difference in module eigengene values between both the groups now just to give get a little more intuitive understanding on what these module eigengenes are module eigengenes are nothing but these are the representative gene expression profile of a cluster so basically what we are trying to ask is that is there a difference in the uh, gene expression profiles between both these groups and looking at the student t-test we can see that clearly there is a significant difference in the gene expression profiles in uh, among the individuals in group one versus the group zero so since there is a significant difference we can say that this module eigengene has an association with the trait of interest which we can see in the pearson correlation so ultimately they both are in a way saying the same things although they are comparing different things but they are pointing towards the same thing meaning that there is a significant association of that module eigengene with the trait of interest and hence whether you perform a student t-test whether you perform a correlation or whether you use a linear model ultimately you're going to get the same list of modules to be significantly associated with the genes or, or the trait of interest uh, with any method you use. We can identify highly connected intramodular hub genes uh, in the modules of interest by calculating the correlation of the module eigengenes and the gene expression profile. So let us get the module membership measures by calculating the correlation first. So we can correlate the module eigengenes with normalized counts and we use the measure as uh, Pearson correlation and let's assign this to a variable called module membership measures and let's run this once we have module membership measures we can calculate p values for these measures Looking at the module membership measures and the module membership uh, measure p values, we can identify which are the genes having high membership uh, measures in the modules of interest. And looking at the p values, we can identify which are the genes having significantly high module memberships in the modules of interest. And we can extract those genes um, and can further look into those genes. So the second part of the question that we were asking initially was what are the genes that are associated with severe COVID-19 um, cases? So uh, we can calculate the gene significance and um, associated p-values uh, by correlating the um, expression data with the trait of interest. So we can start by correlating the expression data and the trait of interest and the trait of interest is um, the severe cases and we use the correlation um, method as Pearson and we assign this to a variable called gene significance uh, correlation and we run this. Let us calculate the p-values for these uh, gene significance correlations and assign it to a variable called gene significance correlation values so let us take a look at top genes that are significantly um, associated with um, patients having severe COVID-19 so let us convert this object into a data frame first and let's take a look at this so here we see the row names as gene IDs and the column here contains the p-values so now let's arrange the p-values in ascending order and let's take a look at top 25 genes so apparently these are the top 25 genes that are significantly associated with patients having severe COVID-19 so you can uh, extract these um, gene IDs and convert them into gene symbols and you can further look into these genes and perform downstream analysis using uh, these genes so that brings me to the end of this video. I will upload my script to the GitHub and will put the link to my GitHub repository in the description section below. So if you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.